Uh, Bill Belichick is brought to you by the commercial banking team at Northeastern Savings Bank. Upgrade your business to a local partner by Catches Law Group, New England's injury pros, and the official law firm of the New England Patriots by Northeast Men's Health. The experts in men's sexual health visit northeastmenshealth.com. And Bill is brought to you by Diesel Direct, the nation's largest asset-based mobile fueling company. And he joins us on the Harbor One Hotline here at Gillette Stadium. Good morning. Good morning, Greg. How you doing? All right. Hanging in there? Yeah. Yep. Um, you made, I know you talked about this post game and said that uh, you made the decision when it came to starting Billy Zappi because he deserved it. Um, did you, uh, what you saw from him yesterday, did you, did you get what you thought you would get from Billy Zappi at quarterback? Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I, you know, I thought he did some good things. Obviously, we, you know, didn't didn't produce any points offensively so that wasn't good but I mean that's wasn't just him that's everybody so you know we just got to do a better job there but uh you know no turnovers uh at the quarterback position and uh there was some positive plays uh, we just need to you know need to make more of them I know um some or I'm guessing that sometimes you make a change like that and you can <clears> get <throat> add a little bit of energy energy to the team did you feel like you got a little bit of an energy boost team wise by making that change well, I mean, there's always more energy when you're when you're productive, and you know we moved the ball. We had some productive plays. We had a couple of explosive plays. Um, we just obviously didn't didn't have any points. So, Bill, when you look at your team defensively, another great performance, I would say, on the defensive side of the football, holding a really good offense to uh, six points. Um, what's kind of the you know when you look at the turnovers you've been able to create? Would you like to see more of those turnovers obviously created into points where you were able to do last year from the defensive side of the football because the offense is having some issues scoring? Yeah, of course. I mean, you'd always like to, you know, but I think last year was a a pretty, uh, look, it was a remarkable year defensively. It was a seven touchdowns, or whatever it was, and returns. So, I mean, that's a lot. It's, it's a kind of historic number. Um, so to think you're going to get that every year is, you know, statistically not very likely. But you know, always, always working for it. But yeah, we're working hard to try to get the ball off off the offense, and and uh, you know, came close to blocking a punt yesterday and things like that. But um, you know, we just it, they didn't happen. So we got to make them happen. When you're playing on a defense like that, and the offense is is not performing where you want it to be, is it tough for those guys to not get frustrated? Well, yeah, it probably is. Yeah, I mean, but at the same time, it's you know we've all seen it go the other way. You know, there's times where, you know, I've, I've been in this a long time, and there's times where you give up, you know, 38, 41 points on defense, and and maybe still win because the offense bails you out. Um, so it's you know it could go both ways on that. Uh, but bottom line, everybody's you know got to do the best they can and control what they can do. And the offensive players don't play defense. Defensive players don't play offense. Um, and you know, you if they play good defense, then you know you got to play better defense. If they play good offense, then you got to score more points than they do. And I think from a team standpoint, that's how you got to look at it. Uh, but you know, obviously, right now we're not scoring enough points offensively, and, and we got to address that. But you know, on defense, you control what you can control, and and you know, play the best that you can. Try to play better than their defense. You have been doing this, as you said, for a long time and with a lot of success. Uh, is it hard for you to the energy wise optimism wise when you get to week 12 week 13 week 14 to to still have that same energy and and optimism no i mean every week's a great challenge in this league and and i look forward to it every week bill speaking of frustrations i know jabril peppers apologized for getting on that uh hot mic while talking to saquon barkley after the giants game does it worry you if you have players on this team that don't believe that the team is good enough to get wins uh, yeah, well, you you know, they get to talk to Jabril about that. I think he made some comments on it. So, uh, you know, look, th- there's not things that get said in, you know, frustrating moments. Uh, you know, we've all had that. And so Jabril works hard. I mean, he's a hardworking kid. Uh, he's out there every day and and, uh, and works hard to uh, communicate well, be a good teammate and compete and help his team. And uh, I think everybody respects that. I certainly do. 
Bill, one of the things that you talked about is being able to create more points, score more points. I, I know that you know Malik Cunningham was brought up, and he said there was a little package for him. Is that something that maybe we could maybe see moving forward because he does bring a different element when you're looking to try to manifest or you're trying to create some offense and switch things up and utilize him a little bit more to see if he can produce maybe in a positive way for you guys offensively? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, that's an option. There's there's other players that, uh, you know, are options as well. It's just really, you know, a question of, you know, time and commitment and, you know, how much you can do and how well you can do it. And so you know, the more time you commit to some things and there's less time you commit to something else and, you know, you just have to pick your priorities. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we have, you know, we have some options here and we'll, you know, look at them and if we feel like there's an advantage to be gained, then we'll, We'll try to do it, and if there isn't, or we think it's marginal, then you know we might not be able to do it. So we'll just have to see how that goes. I know you're just getting in here and and getting at it this morning, but any update on Remandre Stevenson? And uh, we discussed it briefly earlier because of Shime's lead, but that looked like a hip drop tackle. I know that there's a a, a bit of a push recently to outlaw those. Do you think they should? The NFL should outlaw them. Uh. Yeah, I think that's a question for somebody else in the league. It's not really my decision. Um, uh, yeah, we'll see how it is. I mean, you know, we'll come in and do some. Uh, I think he'll he has a a test or two to look at this morning to you know kind of follow up from yesterday. So yeah, it's always hard, right? You know, right after the game or right when it happens, the adrenaline, the emotion of the game. You know, and see where things are. Uh, you know, twelve to twenty four hours later, and you know how things resolve with. Sometimes they turn around quickly. Sometimes you find more than what you thought you found the day of the game. So we'll just have to see. Bailey getting sacked five times. The O-line this season has had up and down games. What do you attribute to that, not having them be, uh, you know, playing to the best game in, game out? Yeah, well, I mean, there's there's, there's mistakes in every game. Um, some of the sacks are a combination of things. Some, some of it was you know, not a lot in the passing game. Maybe we could have got rid of the ball a little quicker. In some cases, it was protection breakdown. I don't think it was one thing, one guy, or one particular, you know, play. It was a combination of things um, that, you know, um, and a blitz pickup. Uh, you know, it, was, it wasn't the same thing on every play. But, um, you know, in the end, that's part of our efficiency is not going backwards. And, you know, sacks are negative plays. And, you know, whether it's negative plays, penalties, tackles for loss, I think those are all things that you got to – try to avoid offensively to stay out of long yardage situations. You look at the Tyquan Thornton drop, a great throw by Zappi. He has had a struggling, he struggled this year, uh, his second season in the NFL. Is ability to catch, is that something that you see guys develop at this stage? Or, is, or if you're at the NFL level, are your hands kind of what they are? Yeah, well, I mean, I think our receivers, you know, generally all have pretty good hands. Um, Look, every receiver drops a pass. You know, every defensive player misses a tackle. Every quarterback throws an interception. Every kicker misses a field goal. I mean, you know, it's part of football. So, um, you want to have as few of those as possible and hit all the opportunities that you have. But unfortunately, that's you know, those things are going to happen. There's going to be drops. There's going to be a missed tackle. There's going to be a missed kick. There's going to be a uh, an interception. Even the great ones have done it. So, work through it. Better concentration. Better finish. But you know, Taekwon can catch the ball. And we've had some drops this year that have hurt us. Um, again, collectively, we got to take advantage of those opportunities. We got to hit the receivers when they're open. You know, it's it's really consistency. I wouldn't say it's ability; I'd say it's consistency. Bill, one of the things that I, you know, I'd love to kind of maybe get a window in it is to be in a situation like this. What, what do you think the the most important thing for you as a head coach to do is to make sure guys don't start checking out mentally because of where record is and and you know moving forward what what do you think your biggest challenges or, or your biggest message is to those guys to say hey listen our record isn't where it wants to be but we need to make sure that every time we step on the field whether it's practices or games we have that same mentality like we're zero zero yeah well i think that's what we've been doing i think is what we'll, we'll continue to do um Again, with the exception of two games, really, I mean, we, you know, had an opportunity in every game. And yesterday was another one where, you know, we had a, a chance of the ball at the end of the game, and you know, weren't able to, 
weren't able to you know get the points that we needed to, to get ahead or to, or to win so look these guys have come in and prepared every day I think my job is to prepare the team the best that I can to be ready to play on Sunday and that's what I've been doing that's what I'm going to do um, and we all need to do it a little better Bill, it wasn't even two full years ago that Mac Jones led the AFC to a Pro Bowl win. From your perspective, what has been the main reason for the regression that that we may have seen with Mac Jones? Yeah, no, I think you know it's, there's a, another point in time to you know reflect over a longer period of time. Right now, really, my focus is on getting the team ready to play against Pittsburgh. Um, you know, looking at you know what happened yesterday and trying to. Gonna learn from that, uh, but you know, we'll just kind of take it, you know, week to week here, and worry about the, you know, some of the bigger picture conversations at a different point in time. I don't think that's really relevant right now. Does does a guy like I mean, does Mac Jones have a chance to still end up being the starter this Thursday night? Everybody, on, look, everybody that's active needs to be ready to play, and everybody that's potentially active, which is practice squad players and all the fifty three man roster players. Get ready to play, and we'll see how things turn out this week. I mean, I don't know. There's a number of questions from, you know, game planning to injuries to things like that that are, you know, we'll see how all that turns out. I don't know. There was a lot of talk leading up to the change from Mac to Bailey when it came to players finding out who the starter was going to be. When you have such a short week playing on Thursday, when do you let the players know uh, who their starter is going to be out there, or, or do you just rely on who's getting the most reps and hope that your players understand? Yeah, again, I think it's every player's job to get themselves ready to play and be prepared to play. And you know, I think the more that everybody worries about what everybody else is doing, then the less they focus on their job. And we all know that I mean, Ramondre Stevenson in the middle of the first quarter wasn't available to us. So somebody else has to be ready to, to go in there and, and do that. And that's the way it is every week. Everybody's got to be ready to go. And you never know how things are going to happen. So our job is to prepare the team. Player's job is to be prepared. And when we're called on, to go out there and do our jobs. This week's Diesel Direct Player of the Game is Jelani Tavai. Um, a little bit about what he brought yesterday and what he brings to this team. Yeah, Jelani's had a really good year. Um, you know, really just can't say enough about that guy. He works extremely hard. Started off with a good off-season program. Um, you know, plays plays a lot on defense in all situations. Plays a lot in the kicking game. Um, you know, it's really, uh, you know, he's worked extremely hard to improve over the last, you know, couple of years, two and a half years, whatever it's been. And um, he's you know, one of our, our smartest, most dependable players and, and more, most consistent players. So um, yeah, it's been He's had a really good year. I wanted to ask you about something that Rex Ryan said this week. Uh, he said that the Patriot way is exhausting for these young players. And I wanted to ask you if there is indeed a Patriot way, uh, is there still a Patriot way, and do you, do you feel like that ever is exhausting for these, these guys? Yeah, I'm not really sure what he's talking about. Um, you know, Rex has never been with the Patriots. I'm not really sure what that means either. But yeah, look, I mean, we're going to do the best we can to, you know, prepare the team and and compete every week. And so that's what we're going to do, whatever that is. The coach's verdict, which is presented by Catches Law Group with Curtis, New England's injury pros at CatchesLaw.com. Catch is proud to be the official law firm of the New England Patriots. Bill, last year at the end of the season, you discussed. 27th in spending over the last three years. We spoke at the beginning of the year about being 31st right now. According to Spotrack, the Patriots are $21 million less than the second least spending AFC team. You cited that the Rams and the Bucks have spent and gone all in and they're paying for it now, but the Rams are four games better and the Bucks are three games better. How is this approach that to spending beneficial when it seems like the Patriots are currently in the same spot as other franchises that at least went all in recently. Yeah. Well, again, right now my folks aren't getting ready for Pittsburgh, so you know those are much bigger and longer discussions that really aren't relevant right now because there's not there's no spending to be done now one way or the other. So we'll deal with Pittsburgh and, and talk about you know cap planning and things like that. That'll come up later. But do you think that the roster is good enough to be better than what the what the team has performed at this year? 
Well, yeah, I mean, we've been in a lot of close games. We haven't won them, so that's what we are. Could could those games have gone differently? How far away are those, those from being different outcomes? You know, I don't know. They are what they are, but been a lot of close games. Do you anticipate spending a lot more next season? Yeah, we're getting ready for Pittsburgh right now. We'll deal with that. All right, Bill. You're in a much better mood than I thought you might be this morning. Yeah, well, it's a short week here. Got to yeah. get ready to go here. You know, All right. Pittsburgh on Thursday, so we we'll get ready to go. All right. Thanks for taking the time this morning. Okay. All you, right. You got to agree. Oh, what? I was just going to say before you go, obviously, Army Navy coming up. Uh, and I see you have your cup here this morning. Uh, will you take time to take that game in? Or, you know, you play on Thursday and then the game Saturday. So how does that work for, for you, somebody who loves this game? Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, we'll, yeah, we'll see. Getting ready for Pittsburgh right now. All right, Bill. Thank you very much. That is Bill Belichick. And the conversation with the coach is brought to you by Putnam Investments. Putnam Investments and the New England Patriots, proud partners to an active game plan on and off the field.